Hello guys, Ashit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. <laughs> yeah, boy. And today we're talking about the new version of Lossless Scaling. And yes, Lossless Scaling is just getting better and better. And if you're one of those guys that loves frame generation, lossless scaling is definitely the way to go, especially for multiplayer games, since you can just go and enable lossless scaling without the fear of getting, well, banned. This, of course, if the online game does not support frame generation. This time we have lossless scaling frame generation 3.0 that brings lots of new things over the previous version that we had, I believe was a 2.3, so we have better performance, we have better quality, and so on, so on, so on. And by the way, I wanted to make this video sooner, but again, uh, I was kind of sick for the past week, then um, I was getting better and then I got sick again and even today I just woke up completely soaked, which is just insane, but I guess it is what it is. And before testing the software and showing you the FPS differences per se, uh, I'm just gonna read a bit about the email that THS sent me. Hey Fabio, lossless scaling frame generation 3 is built on a new, efficient architecture that introduces significant improvements in quality, performance and latency. So. This is one of the things that people that have AMD GPUs like, uh, well, AMD GPUs, they used AFMF2. And even though that lossless scaling was better, in terms, of, in terms of quality, of course, in terms of latency, AFMF2 was a bit superior. And it seems that now we not only have better quality, as we also have better performance and latency. Flickering, for example, disappearing heads in third-person games and border artifacts have been greatly reduced, with noticeable improvements to motion clarity and overall smoothness. And if lossless scaling was, al was already great, it is just getting better. GPU load has been reduced by 30 to 50% compared to lossless scaling frame generation 2 non-performance mode. Meaning that if you were using lossless scaling fra frame generation 2 and you go from the, the version 2 to the version 3, we have an increased performance of 30 to 50 percent of course in the quality mode which is just great now we're talking about latency with initial latency testing with osltt tool at 112 base fps so basically going to roughly 240 and i know it's not 240 but it's for 240 hertz monitors shows approximately 25% better end-to-end -end latency with further testing planned before the release so yeah 24 at least 25 not 24 at least 25 percent better latency so better performance we now have the performance slider as well and the performance and quality slider and we have better latency as well lsfg3 also features an unlocked multiplier now capped at x20 while this provides greater flexibility i wouldn't recommend a base frame rate lower than 30 40 fps or higher is preferred of course with 60 fps being ideal as for all frame generation techniques, I believe. Higher multipliers such as 6x or above are therefore suited for only high refresh rate setups, such as 60fps x 6x for 360Hz and 60fps x 8x for 480Hz. You don't really need NVIDIA's MFG and the RTX 5000 series in order to get x6, x3, x4 frame generation. You have it here with lossless scaling. Also a very important note from THS, for the best experience, I always recommend locking the game the game frame rate when using LS to avoid 100% GPU load, which minimizes lag and improves frame pacing. And frame pacing is very important for frame generation. If you encounter any issues during setup, come across any bugs or just well blah blah blah, reach me out and so on. So basically anyone can use this app. Lossless scaling on Steam. And well, here we are in The Witcher 3 and we're running a 7800X not X3D and the 7600X3D and and yeah we're running basically 4K with FSR2 balanced 70 something FPS and you see the frame timeline the frame timeline is completely messed up kind of, with lots of spikes but that, that is happening because um, because of the recording with OBS because it will work decently if you are not recording at the same time by the way if you are running lossless scaling you need to run in window borderless mode if you are running in full screen mode lossless scaling won't give you that smooth feeling you need to run it in window borderless so otherwise it just won't work then you have the frame generation option lossless scaling 3.0 and so on then we have the mode the resolution scale like i was talking about processes input frames or input frames at the reduced resolution and generates output at the original resolution to improve performance basically it kind of upscales the generated frames by frame generation which is awesome and for example let's try the two times only 
By the way, if you want to, to go and just scale the hotkey, we have Control alt plus s and that's what we're going to do. So now we're having 60, 70 something, sorry, and now we lock the FPS to 60. So as you can see, the frame timeline improved massively already, which is great, much better, although we have less FPS. Now I'm gonna press Control alt plus s and bam, we're going into lossless scaling. Now I will change, yeah. Even with um, with the frame times being completely messed up, yes. We went from, let's say, 47 to 96, which is not 120, because again, um, we were having around 70-something FPS, but as soon as we enabled frame generation, we went from 70-something to like 49. And that's, that's a rough spot. What you can do literally is just going again. So as you can see, we went immediately to 60. What we can do is basically go here to lossless scaling again and go to the resolution scale and reduce it to, like, let's say, 90, which is the performance mode, like THS said. Let's try again, Control alt plus s And yeah, it is smoother, and the latency isn't that bad, actually. And if it wasn't for this awesome frame time, and by awesome, I mean shitty, shitty frame time, um, yeah, the smoother the smoother gameplay would be really noticeable. But it isn't that noticeable now because I'm recording with OBS and so on. Lossless scaling doesn't really like OBS or any recording software. So we're still getting around 50 FPS. So what, what we can do here to get a smoother gameplay, even in this situation? Instead of locking to 60, since we can't reach 60, we go here and we lock the FPS to, let's say, 50 or 45, 48, let's say 48. And the frame time is now much better and the latency is also much better. It's a win-win situation. And that's what we we must do in several scenarios in order to keep the the smoothness where it should be. 48 FPS would look like crazy bad. And here we are having the smoothness. We are having 48 base FPS, but we're having the smoothness of 90 something FPS. Let's try at performance mode, I guess. Now it's even smoother. Look at the frame timeline. We have some artifacts. Look at the frame timeline as well. We have some artifacts there. But in terms of the game, we have very little artifacts, even though this technology is not implemented, implemented inside the game. It's just working outside of the game. And, and yeah, now it's just working much better than before because the frame timeline is just much better. So now let's lock to let's say 52 and that should give us a way better smoothness. Yeah, 52 to 104 and yeah. Not only looks much better as it feels much better and definitely we have the smoothness of 100 FPS while running at 52 base frames. And that's really, really crazy for a software that you can just use on almost any game. That it is what it is in terms of quality even with recording at the same time and so on it is just working beautifully definitely we can go to the two times more than we can go even even lower we can go like 80 percent and then the performance should be better in theory we go to the game and we're having 80 something 88 as soon as i enable lossless scaling we're getting 62 57 58 yeah the difference is not really that much and the quality is still here but I guess, yeah, but I guess that's it. Now we're running Helldivers 2, one of those games that still doesn't have support for frame generation. So we're running at 4K ultra quality mode and we're running or hovering around 80 FPS, which is not optimal and 70 something FPS and it is actually here in the ship because as soon as we go to the terrain, it gets much, much worse. But let's go and see what we get, I guess. So here we are now in the terrain. And by the way, if you're just coming to this part of the video right now, Remember that this frame timeline that we're seeing, it is not like this. It is like this because, again, uh, we're recording with OBS and this happens when we are recording with OBS. But as you can see, 50-something FPS, which is not that optimal. 60, 58, 60-something, Control alt plus s And now we went from 47 to 95. So we were having around 60 before, 60-something, 60 50-something, around 60. And now we got it reduced to 43 base FPS, but then we got lossless scaling frame generation going up to 288, 90. And believe me, we do have some latency, but even going from 40 something to here, we can definitely see the difference. In terms of smoothness, the gameplay is much smoother than it was before, but it's basically just that. It's smoothness, because we still have a, a lot of input latency because the frame rates are quite, um, are quite low. 
So I guess that what we need to what we need to do here is maybe just try and go to the display and get the performance or the the quality reduced a bit. Maybe to, let's say quality mode instead of ultra quality, so we can get a bit higher base frame rate. Yeah, now to 48. So now we're going to 40 something, 50 to 90 something, which is a bit better than we had before. Not great, but a bit better, I guess. And yeah, the latency is definitely better, since we have higher base frame rates, around 50. So we can just reduce the, the resolution scale a bit, and let's try three times. And here we are, at a base frame rate of 68, 70, which is not that bad. Let's see what we get from lossless scaling frame generation now. Control alt plus S, bam, and we go up to 130 something. So from 45 to 130. And let me tell you that in terms of latency, I can definitely feel it because we have 40 something FPS, but in terms of smoothness, it is much, much smoother. Not even comparable. I mean, literally, not even comparable. It's a huge difference there. And besides latency, it just looks much better. We have, of course, some artifacts here and there, especially in the corners of the monitor. That happens a lot, but in terms of performance and smoothness, it just works great. Just works great. So yeah, even the three times mode works pretty well and it is playable. Quite a lot of lag, of course, but playable. And going back to the base frame rates of 60 something, yeah, it is way less smoother than it is, than it was with lossless scaling frame generation three times. But yeah, we can't get it all, I guess, 45. And then we can try and use the four times or something and see if it works this time. So control alt plus S, bam. We change and it is now working from 40 to 160 and yeah now we have more motion artifacts even on the um, kind of a halo outside of the character we can see it the smoothness is better but at the same time it feels like the image isn't isn't just there it's not the same feeling as playing native or even two times or three times it just feels worse we have a smoother gameplay but we have lots of visual artifacts which, which makes the game feel dull kind of strange to say the least but as soon as we go back to oh my bad as soon as we go back to let's say two times we go back to two times and now we lock the frames to let's say 55 and we enable the two times control alt plus s bam and we go from 60 to 100 fps and yeah this one is much better. Definitely the two times is the, is the way to go in most case scenarios. You will get better FPS, but you need to mess around a bit with the resolution scale in order to get some benefits from it. But yeah, is it better than before? Definitely. Now, I kind of skipped this part at the beginning because most of you already know what lossless scaling is, but in case you don't, lossless scaling is a Steam application that you can buy. It costs like five bucks or 7.5 bucks, something like that. So it's pretty cheap and it gives you several options like scaling mode, it gives you the upscaling options, although upscaling is also is only spatial, so no temporal upscaling like FSR 2, 3 and now 4, but we do have lossless scaling 1, frame generation, NIS, SGSR, which is the new one for, for the Qualcomm chips, I believe, something like that, Integer, Nearest Neighbor, Sharp, Bilinear, we have lots and lots of scaling types, and then we have the frame generation. And depending on your card, you might be able to use frame generation 1.1, 2.3 or 3.0, with the 3.0 being supposedly the better one. I tested all of these. 1.1 was not that great, and believe me, I didn't like it much. 2.3 was actually pretty, pretty nice. We had 2.1, 2.2 and 2.3, I believe. And this one was actually pretty nice already, worked very well. And this one, the lossless scaling frame generation 3 just works great. And now we have the option to select, once again, the resolution scale of the input frames. It, it is not about the upscaling pixels, it is just the full frame that is created. It kind of downscales to then upscale to, to the resolution that you're playing. Imagine that you select, for example, here 65%. It means that it will render the fake frame at 65% resolution, will render the fake frame at 1440p and then upscale it to 4K, which should lead to better performance. The lower the resolution scale, the better the performance should be. Then we have several modes and one of the things that the lossless scaling frame generation 3 adds is the custom mode. So you, you have the two times, three times and four times that were added later and as you saw, it works, but the four times should have at least 60 FPS minimum to then, well, multiply four times to 240 Hertz. And 
like TA just said, you can go further, you can go five times, six times, and you can go up to 20 times, I believe, yes, 20 times, but something like five and six times should be only two 360 hertz monitors, 480 hertz monitors, and so on, so on, so on. And even with four times, as you saw, if we, we, if we have lower than 60 FPS base, it just won't work great. We have several artifacts and it, it, it isn't just great. So if you're running a normal system and you want to use frame generation in games that don't have frame generation, even older games, and you can even use frame generation in videos. If you are running a 30 FPS video, you can use lossless scaling frame generation to run a video with frame generation as well. Um, but again, if you're running older games that don't support frame generation on your card, for example, Hogwarts Legacy, that doesn't support any frame generation besides the LSS. Um, Hell Livers, as I told you, even Half Life 2, and if you want frame generation, it can work. Far Cry and so on games that don't support frame generation, you can just go use lossless scaling frame generation, and even if you're playing online, it won't have any issue because the frame generation isn't injecting anything to the game, it is just injecting fake frames to your monitor, then that then will be perceived by you. So normal advice is two times most. If you are running at 60 base FPS, three times, four times will be fine. And anything over that, like five or six times and more if you're crazy, um, yeah, just no, you'll have lots of artifacts and you should have at least, let's say, 70, 80 base frames. But, but yeah, you can select several other things as well, like rendering mode, you can select the sync mode, the maximum frame latency, you now have HDR support, G-Sync support, you have several other options that you can go and select here. But yeah, lossless scaling frame generation 3, approved, definitely approved. And well, guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching it. I hope I really cleared some doubts that you could have regarding lossless scaling frame generation 3. I didn't really show you that much, or at least some people maybe wanted to see a bit more, but I believe that I showed that in the previous videos that I made about lossless scaling, the three times, the four times, and I believe this one doesn't have anything new besides the resolution scaling and of course the custom mode, which is really interesting. And of course, in terms of latency and so on, it is better because if you're using the two times mode, the latency is definitely better. But is it better than AFMF2? I don't think so. In terms of latency, AFMF2 is really, really good. But in terms of quality, Lossless scaling frame generation is much better. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and see you in the next video. Cheers.